Hey guys, it's Carla. I am here again in my Brooklyn backyard for a special grilling episode of That Sounds So Good. Today I am making grilled chicken legs with warm spices and long beans with vinegar and basil. Kind of a twist on like barbecued chicken and a fresh bean salad, but totally different. If you thought that I wasn't gonna be able to talk about a legume in a grilling episode, you are wrong. Long beans, thank God, are legumes. And you guys know how much I love a bean. You might be buying your long beans labeled long beans. Sometimes they're labeled Chinese long beans. Sometimes they're called yard beans or snake beans or cow peas or Bodhi beans. There's like other names too, but I ran out of room in the head note for the book, so I had to stop um, talking about it. But they are really cool. They're really long. They have little beans in them. They're in season in the summer. You might see them go from light green to dark green. Some people say the light green are more tender, but I'm gonna do something to them so that they get tenderized. And they're really fun to grill and they get like delicious and juicy. The other great thing about grilling them is that they're too long to fall through the grates. So if you've ever tried to grill snap peas or green beans, and then, you know, you just lose so many guys to the dungeon, that's not gonna happen with these. So to trim them, I'm just taking off, I guess what would have been their stem. They grow with like these big vines. Okay eaten by themselves just like this, they're gonna be pretty tough. They're very, they're like fibrous. They don't have the nice thin skin of a snap bean. So I'm gonna get them in this bowl. Um, yeah, I gotta get this last batch into the bowl. <laughs> okay. All right, so for seasoning and then a braiding, I've got kosher salt, a good amount of olive oil. Some peps. I enjoy these sorts of tactile things. You wanna get in there with your hands and start like bending and squeezing. It's like when you're at a rave and you gotta activate your glow stick. It's kind of like that. So you're gonna squeeze these, you can bend them, you can bash them. That just helps kind of break up this fibrous layer and it starts to tenderize them. I'm seeing a difference. There are these dark green kind of mottled spots. It kind of looks like the shell of a lobster. You know how it has that like speckly green? And they're just softer. They're like noticeably softer. Great. I feel terrific about my squoes and beans. Okay, here's the thing. The beans want high heat. My chicken wants medium heat. Sometimes it can be very hard to get all of your grilled dishes off of the fire at the right time together. In this pairing, it's great because your fire is gonna start very hot and then come down. So when it's in its very hot phase, you're gonna do the long beans. And then when it comes back to medium, then it's chicken time. And then you don't have to like refill a charcoal or anything. You get 100% of the life of that fire in these two recipes juiced up about it. You know what's wrong with barbecue chicken is that it is often in a wet and sugary and tomatoey and sweet barbecue sauce and that burns. And this is why a lot of people have trouble grilling chicken. I am not gonna do that today. I'm going dry spice, which is a place that I love to be. Starting with cumin seeds. I have star anise, which are beautiful and magical and special and so cool in a very cool nature is really cool kind of a way. Star anise, if you haven't had, this has like a black licorice flavor. So if you don't have star anise, you can use anise seeds, you could use fennel seeds. And if you really, really hate the vibe of that licorice flavor, leave it out or switch to coriander seed, which is a slightly different vibe. So before these go in the spice grinder, I'm just gonna break off the petals. To that, I've got ground turmeric, ground cinnamon, and Aleppo pepper. Cinnamon 
and ground turmeric you could see combined in like a Moroccan style spice mix. You will see star anise and cinnamon together with other spices as part of a Chinese five spice. What those have in common and what's very different from like a tomatoey maple molasses vibe is going more into like warm, toasty baking spices. These spices are already ground up, so I don't need to add them. I'm just gonna grind these guys first. If you have a mortar and pestle and you feel like bashing and banging, then do that. Coolio. So it's sandy, fine, aromatic. Adding that to that. The turmeric and the Aleppo are gonna give the chicken kind of just the most gorgeous golden brown color. Really rich and warm and terracotta-y. All right, before I put the spices on, I'm going to season with kosher salt generously, both sides. The other thing that just absolutely sucks about grilled chicken is that people are often grilling chicken breast. And if you have not seen the shade that I threw all over chicken breasts in my other video, you don't already know that I just find chicken breasts to be not the best part of the chicken, let's put it that way. The leg and the thigh, that's the best part. Also the wing. So the reason chicken breast grilled is kind of a downer is just because it's lean and it has a tendency to dry out. So if you're making barbecued chicken with a sauce, the sauce is now burnt and you have dried chicken. It's just a total drag. Legs are juicy, they have more flavor, they have more fat, and they're more forgiving. If you overcook them, you're less likely to really notice because they have so much of their own goodness that keeps on keeping on. All right, it's gonna look like a lot of spices, but you're gonna use it all. We're gonna do my patented um, chicken dance now. It's a weird dance because you have to get the whole side of your thigh down on the surface, but the chicken can do it. If your spices start to bounce off, which mine are because my chicken was a little dry on the surface, I'm gonna add a drizzle of oil. Great, perfect, wouldn't have done it any other way. Chicken dance for the win. Okay, those are ready. Let's go tend to the fire. What I have here is a very high heat grill. Very high heat is not that great for most grilling things, but it is really, really great for getting a quick char and a juicy hotness out of the long beans. Before I throw anything on there though, I'm going to scrape this clean. It's got a little bit of gunk on it from the last time I cooked. And when the grates are hot is a great time to scrape them because um, everything just carbonizes and releases. So if I was just cooking the chicken, I would now have to wait for the fire to get down to medium, but I'm going to make the best use of my time. Cause I'm a clever girl. Do you see how they're not falling through the grill grates? Oh God. <laughs> the irony. Thou shalt be cleansed by fire. Whew. If only it was that easy for the rest of us. Mmm, sizzle. You should take somewhere between five and seven minutes so it's not very long and you don't want to walk away. Just turn them occasionally. So I want to see grill marks coming around the side where the beans are connecting to the grill grates and also in those spots there's going to be juiciness. I think I referred to hot juiciness moments earlier and so that's that's what I'm looking for. Beans are looking the way I want beans to look. They look shiny, they look floppy, they look charred in spots, they look juicy, they look good. Listen, if you're intimidated about grilling, I just want you to think about grilling like any other cooking. Grilling is heat and time. That's all cooking is ever, all the gradations of the heat and all the gradations of the time. This has heat, Time is always happening, so that's really all you need to know. If you can control the heat, or at least have an awareness of the heat, then you will just have to go with time because we can't control that. 
on the plane of being that you're on, you're gonna be sort of the heat sorcerer in your life. And then you just have to be one with time and kind of know what's going on and not space out. That's it, that's all cooking is, that's all grilling is, that's all sunbathing is, frankly. Great, love these beans. Okay, so while they're still nice and warm, they're gonna get seasoned with crushed red pepper. This combo of the heat and the vinegar and the basil was very much inspired by a fresh bean salad that I had at a restaurant called Missy in Brooklyn. It must have been several years ago because it was pre panty um, and I remember it very clearly and I took a picture of it and it was delicious. So thank you, Missy Robbins, for inspiring the flavors in this dish. This is a very bright and tangy red wine vinegar. This bright vinegary flavor is going to be a really nice combo with any grilled dishes because of the smoke and the deepness and the savory flavor. So that's why it's always really nice to have like a bright, crunchy, vinegary thing. Okay, let's try a bean. Mm. I am gonna throw a ton of basil into this, but I don't wanna do that until the chicken is close to being done because it will wilt. So the beans wait for basil and we grill chicken. Here's what happens when you light coals. They go from inferno to very high heat. That was long bean territory. And then they keep going down, medium high, medium. And we're gonna capture that in between time as heat sorcerers. That's what's happening. So able to hold my hand over four-ish seconds. That's a medium, medium high. And I'm going to cook the chicken over this level of heat to give it time to really cook all the way through. Nobody likes raw chicken at a barbecue, as it turns out. And to let the fat render, and to let the skin crisp, and to let these spices get nice and toasty. We're not jumping all around. We're not having a flame shooting. We're cooking, and we're being chill about it. The total cook time on the chicken is gonna be somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes. But right now, I'm just gonna ride this mellow, medium heat situation. I'm giving these a first flip and a little reposition. The skin side is getting nicely colored and I don't want the skin to burn. My chicken looks amazing. It's really beautifully brown on both sides. The skin is super crisp. The timing is aligning with what I wrote in the book. But really the best way to tell if the chicken is done is to take the temperature. And there's no like glory in trying to guess and being wrong. So I very much endorse having a digital thermometer and using it to check the doneness of your meats because it's a really big drag when they're not cooked through. And you wanna to try to get the thermometer into the thickest part, kind of avoiding the bone. So I'm right dancing right around 155. I'm gonna take it in another spot. Mm, hitting bone, oh God, hitting so much bone. Oh yeah, oh yeah, see that? 158, great. And this was the biggest piece, so I can safely assume that they're all done. And I wanna rest them in a platter that all of the juices are gonna collect. So don't rest them on your cutting board because then all the juice will be on your cutting board instead of in your belly. And so while those are sitting, I can finish the beans. You can use any type of basil that you can find. So regular green Genovese basil, Thai basil, purple basil, all are delicious. Um, just big, beautiful basil. If you didn't have basil, this would be great with like any of the summer herbs that are growing and fluttering around in the sunshine. So your chives, even sta scallion greens could be great. I think cilantro, mint, tarragon, chervil, dill even, or you could mix them and it would be all good. That's it, chicken and beans. Okie dokie, smoky, literally, very smoky. We came, we saw, we slayed, we harvested not only long beans, but also tamed fire. We rode a time continuum, we went to the other side, we got burnished, beautiful, lovely chicken and vinegary beans, and I'm gonna take a bite. 
Mmm. Mmm. The warm and spicy, the smoky and the dark meat, the way the fat like activates all those spices is so, so good. And I have my fresh, lovely basil beans. Twirl them up like spaghetti. Mmm. Mmm. They were good with the vinegar. Woo. They go to another, woo, stratosphere with the basil. It's so fresh and then also so alive. And basil and star anise are an amazing pairing. I just, I think they're somehow related. Look into it. Let me know. I want you to go home. I want you to start a fire and I want you to ride the wave. Grilled chicken legs with warm spices. These delicious charred beans with vinegar and basil. These two can be yours. Second time I winked in one episode. <laughs>、me. Do you love cooking outside and grilling in the open air, but you hate the mess? If so, you need my new invention, Suds Tub. It's sudsy, it's kind of a tub. <laughs> you put your hands in it. If you get raw chicken on them, if you get like other kinds of ashy, dirty things, maybe you just touched a bunch of oily bread and you just want to take care of that. Maybe you have a grilling setup, but you don't have one of those fancy schmancy outdoor kitchens with running water. Me neither. So I just grab my suds tub, do a little tub sudsin', and I'm good to go. If you would like to get into the suds tub with me, go to daddypasta.com. You can get a tub of suds, you can get the pellet activators that make it sudsy, and you too can have clean hands while you grill.